No, you are not looking at the glowing red smoldering ember of a coal that was once a stump. That is just my red headlamp, which I love and I may even review in the future. Welcome again, my friend, to Don't Do Daylight, episode three in our Night Vision Illuminator series. Our first episode being a in-depth review and discussion about the PVS-14 built-in IR illumination. Episode 2 being a comparison between three night vision units, the NVG-10, the Night Fox Swift, and the PVS-14, all using the same illumination source. Now, we are going to compare a third-person perspective of what their onboard or built-in IR illuminators look like to the naked eye at varying known distances using my rangefinder. I will be showing this to you on camera, and essentially the whole point of this is if you are actually using this in a serious role where you are not wanting to be detected, yet you are for whatever reason, either through want or need, using the onboard illumination on your night vision device, what will somebody who's looking in your general direction see? That is what we are testing today. And that's why I'm highlighting this stump. I will be putting the devices on there and then walking back into this field where I will be tuning back into you and we will get a visual on what these devices look like in a third person view from known distances with their illuminators on. Let's start with the PVS-14. It has the weakest illuminator because it requires the least illumination, frankly. It has the greatest light gathering capability. So let's start there and work our way up to the eventually Night Fox with the NVG-10 in between. Here we go. This is so cool and impressive. I am currently standing nine yards away from the PVS-14 and I had to struggle so hard to actually keep focus on that extremely dim IR light. The PVS-14 is sitting on the log exactly as mentioned and on the camera, I'll even zoom in here, it is much more visible to the camera than the naked eye. So you are going to have to heavily rely upon my word here, saying that at this distance, even knowing exactly where the PVS-14 is, I have lost complete visual on the light. Moving up close is what we will do now, where even at the absolute best angle and getting extremely close, at most, it looked like maybe one twentieth of what a lit cigarette cherry looks like. But at this moment, I'm just barely getting a visual on it. We are just moving up where I may be a few arms length away at this point from the PVS-14. And now we are virtually back at the stump right now. And that's what it looks like even when using a camera that can detect IR light. And the thing is, I want to really emphasize that I started at the stump with my eyes perfectly focused on the light, backing away slowly. I can tell you right now that if I was not knowing about this experiment and I was just walking along and somebody was looking at me, with the PVS-14 using that tiny illuminator, wow, it would be nearly impossible to see unless the illuminator was wildly moving or something, there would be no chance that somebody would see you even if you're looking directly at them with the PVS-14 illuminator. You can see it on the camera right now, but even as I am at the perfect angle crouching down level with the PVS-14, I've lost visual on it, and I'm back at that nine yard point right now. That is extremely impressive. I was honestly, I mean, you could tell because I brought the rangefinder out, I was expecting to have to back up for each of these devices 
very far. And this PVS 14, I hardly made it away from the stump at all before I lose complete focus on it. And that's knowing where it is and what I'm looking for. That is impressive. Let's move on now to the NVG 10. Here we have demonstrated now the NVG 10 on level three. I will be testing all of these units on their highest IR setting. And I'm not even particularly at level with the stump or with the NVG 10. You can see even through the camera, of course, that it is quite obvious from this nine yard distance. This is where with the PVS 14, I completely lost sight of the unit. And that was even given best circumstances. The NVG 10, on the other hand, with the naked eye, I can see very clearly, this is very obviously a glowing light on something which it does kind of exactly resemble maybe a darker red version of a cigarette cherry just glowing red hot and that's what it looks like here at nine yards let's move a little bit further back but before we go please do remember to like subscribe comment and share as well as consider contributing financially to paypal.me slash don't do daylight Okay, my friend, let's go ahead and move a little bit further back. Well, believe it or not, we are currently at 25.6 yards now. We have moved back quite a significant distance from our initial testing and, of course, from where the PVS-14 left off. And if you can't tell, it's because it honestly kind of looks the same at this distance. It's a very clear glowing red what looks like if I were just walking along I would say maybe a cigarette that somebody was smoking in the distance still very visible to the naked eye as a glowing red circle let's go ahead and move even further back we are now at 55 yards and I must say that though especially if I zoom in you can still see the IR signature from the NVG 10 55 yards away to the naked eye. If I am focusing with all of my might, I can still see it as a glowing red area of, you know, penetrating the darkness. But wow, we are really stretching it here. This is about the limitation, but if I know what I'm looking at and I'm focusing directly in that area, I can still see the faintest red glow. This is probably not going to be noticeable to somebody who is not actively looking for this type of signature, but we will still continue the test and move a little bit further back to where I will just call the test off because I can't see the light anymore. 65 yards, that is our answer. There is the glow from 65 yards away of the NVG-10 on level three illumination at this point i'm calling it as even focusing as intensely as i can right now I, I really can't even see the light i really can't so i'm calling it the nvg 10 you can see out to this distance and not a step further let's progress now to the night fox swift well, I do believe this is going to be a worthy finale. Look at that. You can even see the glow off of the lens as I move the camera around. There is the Night Fox at nine yards. You can see not one, but two illuminators that are very powerful. Now, I've always said the Night Fox is a great unit when using the supplemental built-in IR, but it is very powerful. Look at that from nine yards away. I have a feeling that we are going to be working our way back to a new record. Let's go ahead and of course I can see this to the naked eye. And I will say that though it is more powerful and looks even more bright than a cigarette butt or a cigarette cherry, and of course it's two, I will say that it's actually somewhat eerie. If you can imagine seeing this, in the woods or in the darkness it looks obviously like two glowing red eyes which is quite intense so just keep that in mind you might scare your opponent off at that point 
Let's go ahead and move a little bit further back. Here we are now at 25 yards. Compare this with what the NVG-10 looked like. It is still quite intense. We've somewhat lost that lens glow at least, so we're not that powerful anymore. By the way, the Night Fox is on illumination level seven. So it has quite a few options and this is, to be fair, the most intense available. Of course, at this distance though, it still just has that eerie look of two glowing red eyes. That would be quite noticeable and uh, intense from a perspective of somebody who you are looking at. Let's go ahead further back. Now we are back at 55 yards. This is getting to the point with the NVG-10 where I was getting very uncomfortable saying that I could see it because I was having to focus so hard and it was just hardly even possible. Now zooming in all the way, we can see this is the view of the Night Fox and to the naked eyes, admittedly, it has gone down substantially in how noticeable it is, yet it is still, I would call it more noticeable right now than the NVG-10 was even up close at, you know, around that nine yard mark. I mean, it's still very noticeable and what you start to get is actually quite fascinating where the two glowing illuminators, when they get so far away at this distance, they kind of just merge together where they look like one. So even if the two illuminators kind of look weak on their own, the further back you get, well now, because there's two of them, it just merges into almost one solid, like larger, more powerful illuminator, or at least that's how I am going to describe it. Still very much visible, especially again with all of these, if you consider that the person who is using the night vision device could be moving to where it would be more detectable, but that is what the static position looks like. We will move even further back. Believe it or not, we have now moved all the way back to about 150 yards. In all honesty, it's quite difficult to get a range considering how dark it is and my flashlight is just not reaching all the way down there with enough power to see very clearly with the rangefinder. But I'm going to estimate that this is about 150 yards away. And to be clear, I have to, at this point, I have to know where to look and what I'm looking for. But I can currently, as I speak, see and notice the Night Fox. At this point, it does start to look like, of course, one illuminator. I cannot distinguish both of them separately. And I would describe it as maybe instead of a lit cigarette, it kind of looks like perhaps a lit cigar, just a bit larger than the lit cigarette. Very faint, but still noticeable. This is an extreme distance though. We will continue to move back probably one more time and we will either max out our distance or finally reach a distance where I cannot see the illuminator. This is what it looks like from about 150. Okay, friend, we are just about maxed out here. I could go technically a little bit further back distance wise, but visually I have just about lost contact with the Night Fox. Now back at about 170 yards. I'm gonna call it at this point, it's about unreasonable to suspect that somebody who isn't just absolutely conducting a test like this would even notice the night fox at this point. So this is the result of the night fox at 170 yards. Walking up a little bit closer now, of course I can start to see it a little bit better, but that's it. So make sure to leave a comment, tell me what you think and subscribe, like, comment, and share. Thanks, and always remember, my friend, don't have a good day, have a good night.